pitch, eh? What a pitch. This is how deep it's getting with footsteps, man. Wow, that's knee. Down to knees, son. Testing conditions, this. Very testing. Yes, people, here we are. And what a glorious winter's morning. So I've parked the Volvo in the Glen Nevis Visitor Centre car park. I've paid for 24 hours. Now the plan for today is to hike up Ben Nevis, UK's highest mountain, full winter conditions, ice axe, crampons, the lot. Now I am hoping to do a wild camp. Well, I better be with all this kit on, but I'm not sure about a summit camp because although the forecasts are great today, during the early hours of tomorrow morning, the wind's gonna pick up pretty high and it's down as very poor visibility. So I'm gonna see what it's like once I get up there and make a wise judgment call based on that. And if you look that way, you'll see exactly what I mean by perfect winter conditions. So it's very different conditions to when I last camped here last summer. It was a scorching hot day, kicking on 20 odd degrees. Whereas today in the car it said minus three in the car park. It's gonna be a lot colder up on top. So last time the main struggle of the hike was the actual heat, sweating buckets and that. But this time it's definitely the weight of the pack. So I just keep checking back on the forecast for tomorrow hoping that it'll change in my favour. Started to see a lot more snow appearing now as we're getting higher. So if we don't camp on the summit, then that's the backup option. That lock where I've actually camped around there before. And the weather were that nice and warm, I actually had a little dip in that as well. I won't be doing that today. But I'm still banking on the forecast changing in my favour. We'll see. Look at the cloud inversions down there. Wow. So just after the lock behind me, and before the zigzags, the way I'm heading, is about halfway to the summit. So I'm going to keep going for a little bit longer, and then have my first break. Probably use that as a good chance to change into crampons as well. Because... As you can see with surface, full on snow now. But it's still pretty grippy. Quick little protein kick. Their words, not mine. Unreal, these views. Look at that, yeah. This looks like a good place to top up on water. So I'm gonna down the rest of this pot, fill this bottle back up, get nicely hydrated. We literally got everything today. Clear skies ish. Clear enough. Lovely lock. Snow capped mountains in distance. Cloud inversions there. Zero wind. Perfect visibility. What more can you ask for, really? Plenty of artwork on display as well. Come on, John. Hey. <laughs> so I've got just over two miles to go. Way past halfway now. I think I'm at 2.7 mile here and the route's about 4.72 from where I parked my car. Then obviously it's 4.72 back down again. So we'll either do half of that today and get back to that lock or we'll be doing it all tomorrow. So someone's marked out 2,500 feet in the snow and Ben Nevis is over 4,400 and we've already got quite a bit of deep snow. So it should be pretty fun up there. And we're on the zigzags now. Takes us more or less all the way to the top. And this is when you start to gain a lot of elevation. Get them lungs going. Get that heart pumping. All part of the training, my friend. Crampon time. Crampon time? Oh, yes. Feet might feel a bit heavier now. 
but I took a bit of weight off my back at least. <laughs> and I got a lot more traction. So that's how deep we're talking at the moment. Wow. I'd go up to waist. That lock seems a long way away now. Finally had a little break. Knackered, I'm not gonna lie. Nearly there now though, getting to the top at zigzags and then it's just that last little push. So things to consider now when I make this decision about whether I'm gonna camp on the summit or not is if the visibility tomorrow is as bad as it's forecast, will I be able to easily find my way down following these paths? And I think I would. To be honest, I've just checked the wind and it's dropped from 45 mile an hour gusts to 37 mile an hour gusts. So it's dropping, but because we're going to get to the summit quite early on, I can chill out up here for a bit, an hour or two, and still have time to make a decision whether to work my way down and camp by the lock or not. I really want to camp on the summit. Look at these conditions, man. When do you get this? Not very often. And we've got these big cairns all the way along this bit. And then you just follow it round to zigzags. <laughs> Probably one of the best viewers I've ever seen. Ever. Well, I'm going to say it is the best view I've ever seen. Yes, yes, yes. So obviously there's quite a few people being at the summit in this last hour or two. So I'm just biding my time before I get my tent up. I've got a little spot here that I'm thinking it might tuck in nicely there. We've got a 35 mile an hour wind gust due at like three o'clock in the morning. And that's at the moment the highest that it's forecast. So I can deal with that. And as a bit of a backup, we have got the emergency shelter. Let's have a look. Yeah, do you know what? I'm not even going to bring the negativity to the channel, but it looks like a crack den. So much mess. But yes, I don't even want to think about that. What a shit all. So this is Ben Nevis. The highest mountain in UK. We couldn't have asked for better conditions. So that's the emergency shelter there and it would literally have to be life or death before I go anywhere near that. This is a good little sheltered spot to get out of the wind. Just down this wall here. So this looks like a good a spot as any. Great then, we're all pitched up. As I'm sure you've seen from that time lapse, that took some doing. So some pegs won't go in because of all the loose powdery snow, and then other pegs, it were hard to get them in because of the frozen ground. But we're up, it's stable. 
Shouldn't be budging. I'm hoping because I'm in this little dip that the wind will just skim over the top nicely. But this is what it's all about for me. These views, man. This coat changes everything. This is the one. So pegs are pretty much buried. I've used ice axe for that one. I've got snow pegs in there. Snow pegs all around guy lines. Doubled up on these pegs. I've even doubled up on some of the snow pegs. This one here. So we should be all right. Shouldn't be budging that now. Look at them views, man. I pitched facing that way because the wind is coming from the north. So I wanted the door facing that way, which I'm more than happy with the views that way. Only problem is the sunset seems to be over there, but because I'm in that little dip, I can't really see the last of it from the tent door. So I have to come outside the tent to see the remainder of that stunning sunset. And I finally got the summit all to myself. Every time a new group started leaving, another group came trotting over the horizon. Can't believe I was umming and ahhing about that this morning. It's just a forecast. I'll tell you about exactly what happened anyway. So I was supposed to come up to Scotland tomorrow, which would be a Monday. I've seen how stunning the forecast was gonna be for the Sunday and the Monday. So I drove up on Saturday night after work I did a 6-2 shift, watched football when I got in at 3 and then drove up to Scotland, got there for about midnight, parked up in Glencorf at night and then drove up to Glen Nevis Visitor Centre this morning and parked there. So I checked the forecast and it looked proper nice Sunday and Monday but then this morning when I got to Visitor Centre I checked again, Monday were looking rough as early hours in the morning. It's still not looking great but it's much better than what it was when I first checked this morning. We were like 50 odd mile an hour gusts and no visibility whatsoever and I won't feel in that, not up here in these conditions. And it was from like 1 a.m. onwards. But that seems to have improved now. Last time I checked it was like 35 mile an hour gusts with a 20, 25 wind speed. So it's not too bad. And the visibility changed from very poor to poor and it changed from fog to mist. So we won't get a sunrise, but come on, look what we're dealing with. Or they could be wrong. It could be worse than anticipated, or it could be clear, beautiful blue skies. Who knows? Anyway, I am rambling. I need to fill my belly. not got my crampons on so this could be slippy oh, that's not too bad what a pitch eh? what a pitch birds up here. They were on shelter roof earlier. But that's where it's going again. Looking for some scran. How have I got distracted? I got in ten a minute ago to make some scran. I ended up getting back on trig point. So gloves wise, I've just been wearing my Rab fingerless mitts where that flap goes over with some decathlon liners underneath and that's been fine. Just 
while I've been putting the tent up and chilling and hiking in. And then if shit gets real, I've got these big baddies to deploy. Frozen. I'm not sure if you're aware or not, but I really like these bowl noodles. <laughs> oh, I've got another one. I think it's the last one that I've got. Starbucks caramel latte. Caramelly and smooth. What temperature are we on? I've just got my thermometer out. So it might still need a bit more time to settle. We're at minus 4.5 at the moment. Forecast says it's at minus six with a wind chill of minus 12. And it's gonna go down to minus eight with a wind chill of minus 14, I think it was, or 15. Obviously that's the wind chill though. I'll be in my tent away from that wind chill. Needed that. Cheers. Here's to a successful summit camp. The highest person in UK right now. We are witnessing an epic sunset right now. But that wind's gone up. And I'm feeling that wind chill when I'm out here. It takes a lot of snow to make very little water. These colours are next level, as are the views. Right, I've had to come in tent and close fly sheep for a bit because, yeah, we're getting some rape spin drift from that snow blowing inside the vestibule. Call that, man. One thing I am going to have to move is that flag that someone put here at Union Jack. <laughs> it's flapping about like mad, making a rape noise. Hopefully you can hear me over that wind, but I'll show you what scran I've brought. So I've just had my bowl noodle. I've got a Lancashire hot pot, sort of an army ration pack. And I've got another ration pack, which is a spicy sausage and potato wedges. I reckon that'll be nice, that. I've got some bacon fries, lovely. Some sunbite sour cream. Two of these chocolate waffles. When in Rome. Bit of iron brew and that. Scotland. And then for brekkie, got a golden syrup porridge. And that should keep me nice and fed for the rest of this camp, hopefully. Yeah, a bit nippy in here now, as I'm sure you can see. I brought that flag inside, so stop it flapping. So I've put the spicy sausage and wedges in. Nice latte as well. So it's not the best meal I've had, but it's not too bad. Oh, dripping it everywhere, man. I'm not gonna see that here. The sausage is nice, but the wedges, no, I don't know. It was nice enough to have scrammed it in about six mouthfuls though. 
and a nice little latte to wash it down with. Quite nippy now, you know, I've shut the inner of the tent. Usually I can manage sleeping with it open, but just getting a lot of draft coming through. It is nippy, not going to lie. I think we're down to minus six outside. The wind doesn't sound too bad right now, though, so I'm going to take advantage of that and try to get some sleep. It's due to kick off a little bit, like around four, five o'clock-ish. No more than 35 miles per hour gusts. So we'll see what the visibility is like as well in the morning. I'm going to have to get up relatively early, start packing away because I've got a feeling it's going to take ages to get those pegs out. I'm going to be frozen solid. When I went out earlier to check the guy lines, yeah, them pegs weren't budging. So at least I know the tent's in safe. Safe and sound. So I'll speak to you in the morning. Peace out in a bit. Well, morning people, it is mental out there. I've just had a little peek out. I've not yet gone out. I'm not ready to brave the cold yet. But if I just spin you around, it's hard about getting all snow inside. Definitely a cold one. Obviously, I'll show you around a bit more once I've had my brekkie and that. And I'm ready to brave the cold. So I'm just going to have a golden syrup porridge and then tidy up this place. That's my half-drunk coffee last night. I don't know why it's gone that colour. Frozen solid. Oh, shit. Oh no, we're all right. We'll get enough out of that. Coffee and porridge. Right, let's go have a look then. Oh yes. Oh, yes. Let me shut this door. Wow. Wow. So, no sign of anybody yet this morning. Look at the tent, man. Nothing compares. Summit shelter looking very cold indeed. All frosted on this side, which wasn't there yesterday. I suppose all that'll go once that sun rises. Pure white out conditions that way. Ben Nevis, what a place. It's not stack it coming down here now. Right, I'm gonna start putting my tent away before Riff Raff turn up, because it won't be long now. Sunrise is in about 20 minutes. It's 20 past seven now, so it won't be long. Visibility isn't too bad though, but we have had a fresh dumping of snow last night. So the paths, yeah, they'll still be all right. In places, there might be a bit 
sketchy to spot, but we'll be all good. Right, I'm gonna get this away. Waterproof gloves are a must. Leave no trace as always, apart from a nice little grave spot where my tent has been. Just need to cart all this stuff down now. Nearly five mile back to the car. Looks like I've got loads of stuff. Certainly one of my heaviest camps, if not the heaviest, with the shovel, ice axe, walking poles, four season tent, all them extra snow pegs, ice axe, crampons, you name it. Two warm jackets because I've got my down jacket and then I've got this synthetic one. Wow. Don't want to jinx it, but wind. Nothing. Zero. All that all putting that tent away and packing away has been nada. So I suppose it'd be a good idea to take advantage of that. Get all this crap loaded back into my bag and work my way down this mountain. The biggest, highest mountain in the whole of UK. Ben Nevis, you have been absolutely beautiful. I'll put my flag back where it was. Well, not my flag, but the flag. As you can see, that's barely moving in the wind. That's just like an ice rink now. <laughs> Solid. Ready for the next camper. Well, that's me. Crampons on. Ice axe in hand. White out conditions. Let's get out of here. Ben Nevis. Hopefully next time I come to the summit shelter, That'll be empty. I'd have done my bit, but I didn't have a bin liner. Otherwise I'd have took some stuff down, but I've got a tiny little carrier bag. Not even a carrier bag, like a dog poo bag sort of size. And that's just for my dehydrated meal wrappers and stuff. But what a camp, what a camp. One last look. Trig point, summit shelter, camp. You can just see that flag. Right, now it's concentration time. Make sure I navigate the correct way. Yeah, not easy conditions to navigate in, to be honest. I've had to put my goggles on. Not so much because of the wind, it's because my shades are in my backpack and just all this snow is really bright. Because of the recent snow, to be fair, you might be able to make it out better than me. You can't really see where the paths are at all. But one thing I've noticed is as you're walking, you can tell by the texture of the ground. It's a lot more crunchy where it's iced over underfoot as opposed to the deep powdery snow. Right, so I've made it off the summit section. And I think I've just got to the zigzags. I sort of recognise that little shelter sort of cairn thing there. Testing conditions this. Very testing. Right, I best put GoPro away because it's ice axe and safety first time. Let's get down safely. Still nothing to report. Pure white out conditions. Just slowly making my way down. I don't know what you can see or not, because GoPro's on my chest strap, on my rucksack. But it's starting to slightly open up down there. 
So you can see my footprint, but there's just nothing in front. In fact, I can see the halfway lock. That's a good sign. This is how deep it's getting with footsteps, man. Wow, that's knee. Down to knees, son. So I'm about halfway down the zigzag section. So I'd say about a third of the way down. Still not seen anyone yet. Can't blame them, like, with visibility today, but it's supposed to clear up later on, I think. So we'll probably see some as I start getting closer to the bottom. Quick pepper army. Stunning over there, man. Don't look real. It's like a bloody painting. Oh, one thing I do in a way is my parking's run out at the Glen Nevis Visitor Centre. But what can you do? They should let you park for more than 24 hours. Because that's just encouraging you to start rushing to get down off that mountain. Because shortly they've got to be expecting people to be camping out. We're in Scotland. So 24 hours. Yeah, that's normally fine. Say if you get to the car park for 12 o'clock, up and down for 12 o'clock, no problem with most mountains. But when you're doing Ben Neville, obviously it takes a while to get up. So you want to set off really early. So I think I set off like half nine or something from car park. And I've not got down in time for half past nine. Should be fine. Hopefully there's no like ANPR cameras or all like that. That scan your red jump way in. But I did have to put my reg into the machine when it printed my ticket. So we'll see. Who cares? We'll deal with it. We'll deal with it. I've seen my first groups of people. So we're going to pass loads of people soon. They're on the path. Just follow the end of the ice axe there. They're on that path, which will then loop around here eventually. I think we've got a couple more zigzags to do yet, us, but there's like one, two, three, one, two, one, 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 two, three. So we've got quite a few people there. So I've been in Scotland since Saturday. I had a night in the car Saturday night, which I didn't film, just a little car camp in Glencoe, which was pretty sick. And obviously last night, Ben Nevis. Tonight, I'm not sure what to do because by the time I get down, get all my kit sorted, time's gonna be kicking a little bit. So I am gonna do another camp. I'm just not sure where yet. I might head back towards Glencoe and just do a relatively short, simple camp. Just a nice chilled one. I think it could be time to ditch the crampons because we're getting a lot of stones now. It might have to be micro spikes though because it's very frozen. We'll see. Yeah, them people are well far away. I've got loads of zigzags to do yet. Crampons, man. Absolutely love them. Just grip is just something you just no longer have to think about when you're walking. Just one less thing to be concerned about. I think I've done that a bit too big. Good. Look. Outdoors. That's me. And then this is the stage where every person you walk past. Oh, did you camp out last night? Was it a good night? Whoa, I just nearly twisted my ankle, man. These crampons. I've never walked in high heels before, but I can imagine that's what it's like. Because you just raise so much off the ground. And when you're not in deep snow, it's like you're on stilts. Or another one is, You've got up and down there quick this morning. And then I have to say, oh no, I can't. <laughs> I'd be bloody carrying a big day sack, wouldn't I? With all this 70 litre berg house. Right, I'm down at the halfway lock. Time to ditch these crampons. This is the time when I'm going to fall. It's now. Crampons are off. Icy paths. Forgot to get my micro spikes out. But I think we should be all right. I definitely got up to this point, well past this point yesterday with just the boots on. So I should be fine. Sun's out. 
what we like to see. Hopefully melting some of this lethal ice on these stone paths. Yeah, I'm with Dave the Solo Summiteer on there's no way that that lock is the halfway lock. That's what it's known as, a halfway mark. The first section going up is a lot shorter than that second section after the lock. If you've not checked his video out, then I recommend you do so. He's done the same as me. He's done a summit camp on Ben Nevis and it were him who were asking for advice about where to park overnight and stuff. In fact, yeah, so you're to blame. If I get a fine, Dave, <laughs> only joking, bro. But yeah, I'll put a link to his video in the description, actually. So make sure you check it out. Awesome, as always. And he got drawn out as well, so you'll see some good footage. I didn't bring drawn out. I did bring it, but I just didn't chuck it up in there. It had been its first flight since I crashed it and glued camera back on. So I didn't fancy it last night in them winds. Right, that's enough of that. They're not really the boots or the terrain, or the time, or the place for trail running. <laughs> Things we do for the old tube, eh? You set of tubes. Conditions now, eh? Fully opened up with clear skies. Back at the whip. Have we got a ticket? Nothing as of yet. Look at my boots, man. They're smoking. Smoking up. Look at the steam on that. And that one. <laughs> oh. That feels good. That feels good. First time I've properly sat down since I last sat here. <sighs> Warning lights. More lights than a Christmas tree, this dash. Right guys, back at the car, safe and sound. What a camp. What a f***ing camp. Probably my best camp of all time, maybe. Certainly one of the hardest, especially this morning. I can only imagine how difficult that would have been if there were high winds and could have become very dangerous very quickly. Couldn't see anything, couldn't see past the end of my nose. Trying to look out for paths on ground which the snow drifts had just blown over so you can't see them. Obviously I'm relying on my GPS on phone just to keep me sort of on track so that I'm at least facing the right direction. But anyway, here we are, we made it down, safe and sound, happy days. And now on to the next adventure. So make sure you smash that subscribe button, click that bell button to get notified when I make these videos. Every Monday at 7 p.m. weekly videos. If you want to support the channel that little bit more, that little, little bit more, head on over to Patreon. I'll put a link in description and I'll pin it in top comment as well. We've got a few members in there so far, so I'm hoping to just grow that community, help fund or put towards some of these trips. Because this girl swallows some juice, let me tell you. And driving a 700 mile round trip just to come to the Scottish Islands costs quite a bit of dough, to be honest. And today's mission, I'm not 100% sure what I'm doing yet. It'll be my third night in the Scottish Islands. So make sure, like I say, you've subscribed to find out. And hopefully, I'll see you next week. Thanks for watching. Peace out in a bit. Laters. Bye. Bye bye driver. Bye bye driver. Bye. In a bit. I need a wash. 
and fast. Right, laters. Bye.